Um, so I thought what we'd do today is just talk a little bit about uh, the school and the condition it's in and kind of why there is this need to have a new Norwalk High School and why we have this opportunity uh, for an 8% reimbursement uh, from the state, uh, which is unusual considering we have a 32.5% reimbursement from the state. And uh, I thought that we would video this so that we can share with members of the community because a lot of people don't come in this school and they should see uh, the conditions of the school and why uh, we're fighting so hard for a new school and why it's important for the city of Norwalk. This school was built 51 years ago. Uh, it was modeled after a prison and it has, uh, most schools last probably maybe 30 years, 40 years. Um, some of them get renovated is new. Um, most of them do. I think in Norwalk, we have not seen a lot of that over the last 40 years. So if you want, can we start through the auditorium? In addition to that, we have a sound system that, is, that, we have to, that Mr. Roberts has to rent for shows. I'd also say too that, uh, you'll hear me say this a lot, is that the stage is not ADA accessible. So if there was a student who could not walk up those stairs like we do uh, during candlelight, um, there really should be uh, a, a seat and a ramp to get kids, almost like you see in a pool, uh, to get kids up there, students up there, but we don't have that right now. On the second floor, and even over here where the, where the students learn how to do lighting, up there in the lighting booth, and the sound booth, neither, none of that is ADA accessible either. So. The vibration and the noise that yes. reverberates in this building because it's been constant. Yeah. Yep, I, I was agree. looking through my uh, videos today to see if I could, if I still had the video of in my classroom when they were working below so on the culinary down. arts. I was, I was not directly above it, but over it. The floor was shaking, and it was so like we had to. I mean, learning had to stop. It had to stop um, because there was nothing to be done. And with the kids, we would just be like, "Yep, okay. exactly." <laughs> it really is. Mm -hmm. Yep. Option A, I think. Not and just to have like a fluid learning experience right now, like I, I think I, I call Ralph more about this building than I think any other building in terms of uh, accessibility points for the students because we're a one to one district and the students can access the technology at the rate that other buildings can at different points throughout the campus, which is a huge challenge because this is not. This form of learning is not going to end, and we still continue to problem solve through all of these challenges. And it's just very hard to find the right balance because the cement walls just inhibit right. the the, mm. the transmission of um, yeah. Wi-Fi across the, the different access points that yeah. are set up throughout the building. Uh, I just want to show real quick here in the choir area. Um, anybody who has been, has a child or, or knows somebody in the choir. We're, we don't have to go upstairs. Um, but this is the only way to get to the choir room. This is a perfect place to play hide and go seek. Mm. <laughs> so literally on a daily basis, myself, security, are going through this building, finding kids who are supposed to be in the class. We can ping their phone so we know they're in the building, <laughs> but we have to then go find them. As you, as you look at this library, please compare it to Brian Mann's library. Most uh, learning commons now have a space for students to gather, common spaces for teaching, quiet spaces for study. That is not here. To be honest, if you walk into our elementary schools, our learning commons are much more upgraded than, um, than this one right here. And when we looked at it, just even the, the layout, the way it's set up, You've got all this concrete. You don't. You want to get as much open space as you can, and flexible space. Usually, you have an area for presentations. You have an area for maker spaces. You have an area that actually allows you to bring in technology when you need it. Um, this is just not conducive to that at all. You've got problems with Wi-Fi here. We could stick access points everywhere. And I've tried, I know. It's actually where I have my junior prom, um, but it's not uh, conducive to. It's really a cafeteria in the 21st century. You shouldn't spend half your lunch break in the line to get lunch, number one. And number two, we started painting the posts and pillars because it was so depressing. 
just to give kids an understanding of feeling a little bit ACC and students who aren't ACC, just making it look better. We just added posters uh, last week. Here from Red Cross. Uh, just to kind of give it a little sense of these national flavor and these streets. But, but the point is, it looks so bad. If you knew about that in December. And so, you know, our protocols are you close the blinds, people get on one side of the wall. But if we had to evacuate in here, where would we go? So it, it's an issue. Katie mentioned the police, so just how hard it is to, to keep kids safe during the lockdown in this space, particularly because those doors don't close um, effectively. And we had a lot of challenges getting somebody down here in enough time to lock these doors properly when kids were still in the cafeteria. Right. It's a security nightmare with something like this. It's, it's, Definitely a yeah. Okay, let's go down to the, uh, where it actually prepare and you can see, and this is it. So you got hundreds of students at the same time just trying to, uh, trying to get their lunch. Mr. Roberts aptly said, you know, kids shouldn't have to spend half their lunch period trying to get lunch. And that's what happens here. This has been a leak forever, and the reason why this was painted over a few years ago was because of the accreditation, so that when the accreditation people came through, they didn't notice a leak because that would ding us of points. So this is, this is where we took out the PCBs, and back in, um, let's see, I'm just looking up the, the legislation, because I put something in the school construction bill years ago back in 2018. Yep, um, it was again, this was a, I don't know, it was minor costs. It was basically just for labor to take it down and change the doors and put up new, um, the idea was to put new locks on the doors too. Get new doors, get new locks, because it would lock if there was a lockdown. And that was, I don't, I don't think that ever, per my knowledge, did that ever happen, Mr. Roberts? I don't think that ever no, happened, did it? Same, right, so it's still, the right, but they don't lock automatically, do they? Right, so. Knowing that we haven't nailed down the exact funding stream, is it fair to say here and in, in public that uh, a pool will be guaranteed as part of the plan? Absolutely. Okay. I've said it before, there will be a pool. Okay. Can't be any clearer than that. Well, yeah, <coughs> it's, it's important because yeah. there's so much confusion and a lot of community feedback. And, and a lot of things, you know, we try to do as much as we can to be transparent and get the message out and get the word out. but. You know, there's going to be people who are going to spread rumors, false information. You know how that goes. By the time you hear it, it's so wrong that there's nothing, it doesn't have any resemblance to the truth. I've talked about a 50% reimbursement of the pool since we passed the bill years ago. And it's, it's sometimes, it's a matter of people listening or people who don't want to listen and create controversy where there's none exists. The controversy is that there was a bus access on King Street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was the controversy on King Street. Resolved. And it that has been. been and, it, you, and you'll hear about that on Tuesday also. Yeah. We met with the neighbors yesterday. Yeah. With mm -hmm. Alan and I saw you all. Mm -hmm. that that was, was, I know, I was and this is what leaders do. Leaders uh, are visionary. We have to be visionary about our city and about where do we want to see ourselves in five years, 10 years down the road. It's not what's, what people are chattering about right now because they don't have the ability to, to, be, to have a vision. Uh, it's like in my real estate life, it's like pe you, know, you tell people when they're selling the house, take down the pictures and you know, take down the clutter because most people can't see through those things. Um, and same thing for here. You want to you wanna have, as a leader, as, you're all leaders, you want to have that vision for where do you want to see the city in the next five, 10 years, over the next generation, um, so that when people are thinking about coming to this city, they look at all the things we have to offer, and that includes great schools, not just good schools. We have great teachers. Mm -hmm. We have great you know, people in, who are running the school, but we need great facilities too, and that will make our job so much better. It's easier to look at this school and go, oh, it's fine, even though it's not. We know it's not. Um, but once you get that new school, I'm telling you, you know, it's, gonna be, it's just going to be such a game changer for this city. I believe uh, it'll be transforming. And you're right. And we deserve it. We deserve it. In this, we pay a lot of taxes to the state. We have good kids who go to this school and our entire school system. And that's why we want to fix all of our schools. But these kids deserve it. They deserve a 21st century learning environment, not a 1971 learning environment that they can't learn in. It's very difficult, difficult to do.